So today we will be presenting a snapshot of GFDRR's DRM FCB or Disaster Conflict Nexus program. The presentation will take you through uh, why the Nexus is critically important for our work and that of the international community, what impacts have been generated so far under the program, and going forward, what are the strategic priorities that will continue to drive the program. At the very onset, uh, uh, you know, what we have felt throughout this execution of the first phase of the program is that there is a dire need to define the nexus in concrete terms. And that is changes with every country context. Uh, it's something that needs to be done so that we can better understand the strategic and operational implications of what the disaster conflict nexus means in the context of a certain country. and what uh, kind of specialized customized solutions are required to make activities uh, undertaken in this nexus context more effective efficient and create the maximum impact on the ground our analysis shows that over the past two decades world bank has increased investment in fcb countries from 100 million to 4 billion with almost 40 percent of this investment focused on disaster risk reduction GFDR has also responded to the growing demand for support in FCB since its inception. In the last five years alone, 50 million of disaster engagements have leveraged 1.8 billion. With support from Germany, during phase one, GFDR supported 10 technical assistance projects across regions. Notable outputs include provision of integrated risk analysis and baseline studies to support DRM engagements in FCB setting as well as adaptation of cross-sectoral frameworks and operational toolkits to be sensitive to disaster climate and FCB risk. Experience also confirms that when multiple risks are compounded, addressing one aspect in isolation is not helpful. Um, lack of common understanding about the definition of fragility also pose a challenge for government counterparts in FCB countries to successfully implement DRM programs. To illustrate, here is an example of an intersectional risk analysis done in South Sudan. By simply layering areas affected by floods with areas exposed to conflict fatalities, food insecurity and displacement, the compound vulnerability index helped the team to identify geographic targeting for the ongoing community resilience project and adjust their, their conflict sensitive DRM intervention accordingly. This simple method would allow GFDRR to effectively build resilience to disaster and climate risk, while at the same time contribute to strengthen social cohesion in client countries. Another thing we have realized during the course of implementation of phase one is that we need to foster and strengthen collaboration both internally and externally across the bank to make this program a success. So over the months uh, and years, we have forged stronger and closer working relationship. Finally, uh, while this program will continue to remain a demand-driven program, which is driven by demand expressed by our regional colleagues and clients, uh, but we will continue to strive to cultivate and educate demand around some of the priorities that you see on the screen to, uh, here. And these priorities have been determined based on lessons learned from phase one as well as consultations with various external and internal uh, partners. These priorities in a nutshell include integrated disaster conflict, risk analysis, community level conflict. Fourth, a, a dire need for capacity building of clients and partners for integrated disaster conflict nexus solutions, strengthening and expanding partnerships along the humanitarian development peace nexus, joint diagnostics on disaster, climate change, and conflict, and displacement. And finally, uh, a, a focus on uh, urban force displacement and cities' resilience in the context of the nexus. And finally, I would like to invite you to visit our website. There is also a video which explains the program a bit more. And with this, uh, thank you very much for your time today. Mm -hmm.